Hey everybody, welcome to the course. I am John Merritt from Born to Produce. We are a Steinberg certified training center and you guys are gonna to learn to use Cubase by making a complete track from start to finish. You can follow along in all versions of Cubase, A, I, L, E, Elements, Artist and Pro. I'm gonna play a quick sample of the track that you're going to make and then we're gonna get right into it. That is all because we forgot where we're from. So this is going to be loads of fun and the first four lessons are totally free. So let's get on with it. So this is the Steinberg hub that you see when you first load up Cubase. On the right hand side you have projects that you can load or you can start with a blank project which is actually what we're going to do. And on the left hand side you have news which will tell you some useful info like when there's a new update available for Cubase. So like I say, we're gonna start with a blank project and it's best to tick the box prompt for project location and then we're gonna create empty. And because we clicked prompt for project location, it's asking us where we want to put our project folder. So I'm just gonna put mine on the desktop so it's nice and easy to get to. I'm gonna create a new folder, call it Cubase Ultimate. You can call it whatever you want, hit enter and then select a folder. So this is the Cubase project window and we're gonna start bringing sounds in almost straight away, but first we wanna very quickly check our sound card settings. So in order to do that, just go to the studio tab, go to studio setup, and then we're gonna click on VST audio system and we're just checking this box here. So if you have a dedicated sound card and you've installed the drivers for it, it will show in this list here. Mine's the ASIO Fireface. If you don't have a dedicated sound card, it's no problem at all. Just make sure that generic low latency ASIO driver is selected. Click OK and we're good to go. So this that you see in front of you is the Cubase project window and is where you spend perhaps 95% of your time in Cubase. So before I explain this in any great depth, let's actually bring something into our project so it all makes sense. So first of all, I'm gonna go up and show the right hand zone just by clicking that little button there. And the right hand zone is really where you bring stuff into your project. And Cubase also comes with a whole load of sample packs which you can get to by clicking loops and samples. So these are all the sample packs that come with Cubase. Now bear in mind that yours might look slightly different depending on which version of Cubase you have, but you should all have the GASE library. So let's click on that. And you can see here, we've got a whole load of samples. Now these are all sort of drum hits, which we refer to as one shots. And when you click on these, you're probably at the moment not hearing anything. So in order to be able to audition these samples, we need to select auto play down here. So that little button, just activate that. And then when we click on a sample, you'll be able to hear it play. You've also got a volume control. So this is perhaps just a little bit loud at the moment. So let's just turn that down and this will just turn down the volume of the auditioned samples. So what I want to start with and what is always a good idea is to start with the kick. So we then got a foundation to sort of build our track on top of. So this pack obviously has a load of different samples other than kicks and there are a lot of them. So it's a bit hard to sort of navigate through but luckily Cubase has some filters that we can use. So if we scroll down under subcategory, you'll find that there's a kick drum label. So click that and then all you're gonna see is the kick drums that are in this particular sample pack. Now just bear in mind that Cubase does remember your filter settings. So if you're coming back later into the media tab and you're looking for a hat, you're gonna have to clear the attribute filter. Otherwise, all you're gonna see is kick. So if you click that, that'll clear it and then you'll be able to see all of the other sample types again as well. You can also just go up to the search bar and type kick. And then again, you'll see all the kicks in this particular sample pack. So the kick I want is actually towards the bottom here and it is this one here, FCO1 UB1 kick to UE, nice name. But basically it's a nice full rounded and quite punchy kick, which should suit our sort of pop housey kind of track quite well. So we found our sample that we want to use. We just got to get it into the project. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. One is just simply to click it and drag it into the arrangement. And this brings the sample in as an audio sample. I'm actually going to undo that by hitting Control or Command Z on my keyboard. And the second way of bringing it in is by right clicking and then going Create Sampler Track. 
which is what we're going to do. And you can see here Cubase has created a track in the main project window and it's also loaded the sample into our sampler control. Now very quickly if you are using Cubase AI or LE you won't actually have the functionality of this sampler track but we've made a short video on a free plugin that you can download and install to use instead of the sampler track which comes in Cubase and that will give you the same functionality. Just follow the link in the description about the free sampler track video if you're watching on YouTube or you can find the video in the extra videos folder in the work files if you have bought the full course. And you can see in this sampler control window we've got this keyboard down the bottom so if I hit C3 you'll be hearing the kick at its natural pitch as it sounds also in the media tab. If I play it up the keyboard you can hear it's higher in pitch and if I play it lower on the keyboard that's right, you guessed it, it's lower in pitch. So just remember that C3 is the natural pitch of the kick. So obviously we want to get this kick into our projects window so we can actually start making a sort of loop. But first of all, I'm just gonna very quickly describe how the project window is laid out because it's actually quite intuitive once you get used to it. So the middle of the projects window is where you bring in and arrange all the elements of your tracks which you're going to see in just a second and around the outside of the window you have three zones which you can show or hide by using the show hide zone buttons at the top here so I can turn them all off if I want and have a completely clean project window or I can activate them all as and when you need. The best way to think about the zones is that the right hand zone is where you find media to put into your project. The lower zone is where you can manipulate that media once it's in your project and the left zone is where you have the overall channel settings for that media. So for example in the left zone we've got our kick track selected and we've got a volume control over here so I'm actually going to just turn that down to about sort of anywhere around minus nine is absolutely fine. Now the reason we're turning it down is we're gonna be adding lots and lots of other things to our project and we don't want the volume level to get so loud that it starts distorting on the output channel. So we just turn down the first element that we bring into our project. So now let's get a four by four, very simple kick loop going in our project. So in order to do that, we need to actually draw in a MIDI segment. So first of all, let's zoom in a bit because we're a bit far zoomed out. The numbers that you're seeing here are bar numbers. And then there's four beats to every single bar. So at the moment, we're quite far zoomed out. So very simply, you can just click on the timeline when your cursor changes to that four way arrow. So you can click and then just drag down and that will zoom in as you can see you can also if you want use the G and H keys to zoom in and out you can use this slider over here which you can either hover over with your mouse wheel and zoom in and out or you can actually drag it of course and lastly if you want to you can hold the control or command key on your keyboard and then use your mouse wheel just to zoom in and out wherever you want so we're a bit more zoomed in we can see bars 9 and 10 that's great so we're going to set up our kick in this bar here now I need to draw in a MIDI segment, so to do that I need to use either the draw tool which I can access by going up to the top toolbar, I can right click in the project window to bring up the floating toolbar and again I can select the draw tool from it or if I want to use the keyboard shortcut I can hold alt or option and it will just automatically turn my cursor or my selection tool into a draw tool. So and then I just draw like that and we've got one chunk of MIDI. Yippee. So very quickly, let's just actually call this something else because that's a bit of a mouthful as it is. So we just double click on the name, call it kick. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold down shift and then hit enter. That also has the effect of renaming all of the MIDI segments as well. And don't worry if you've got a different color to what you see here, you can easily change the color of a track just by hovering over the colored section here, holding alt or option, clicking it, and then you'll get this color palette here, which you can then choose any color that you like. Okay, so we've got our MIDI segment. Now, what do we do with that? Because at the moment, if I hit play spacebar on the keyboard, just as a shortcut to play, you don't hear anything. That's because we need to actually add some notes to this MIDI segment. So I'm gonna double click on it, and that's gonna load this MIDI segment up into the lower zone. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see clearer what's going on. And at the moment, you might not see all of these different grid lines. So if you see something more akin to that, don't worry, that's absolutely fine. What we need to do is just change the quantize preset here to 1/8. That means that one bar is gonna be divided into eight 
equal segments. And again, we've got our keyboard on the side here. So we can play our kick. Remember the natural pitch of the kick is on C3. So we want to draw in our notes on C3. Again, you can select the draw tool from up here or you can hold Alt or Option to change your cursor into the draw tool. And we're gonna draw a kick on each and every beat. So 9.1, 9.2, 9.3 and 9.4. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Now we've done that and if I hit play, of course, you can hear the kick playing and you can also see these notes are mirrored in that image up there so you can sort of see what's going on. So that's great, but there are a couple of very important things that you need to know about how this project window works. And that is about the sort of quantize settings, which is almost like the snap settings, if you like. So when I move this chunk of MIDI, you can see that it's only snapping to the bar lines here which doesn't give us much control. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top of the projects window under this box here that says bar at the moment, click that and then we're gonna click adapt to zoom. So this is basically the only setting you need. And now you can see we've got these grid lines and our MIDI segment is snapping to the grid line. So what adapt to zoom means is the more you're zoomed in, the greater or the finer control you're going to have. So just leave it on adapt to zoom and you'll be golden. So we want to work on just this little segment here, but at the moment, obviously, when it gets to the end of it, it just kind of carries on playing. So I need to set up a loop region, which is very easy to do. All you need to do is get your cursor and bring it up to the timeline. And if you raise it up to the top, you'll see that it changes to a little draw tool automatically. So just draw in a loop over our MIDI segment. So just one bar and still at the moment, if I play it, it doesn't loop round. That just means I need to activate this loop. So we come to the transport panel at the bottom of Cubase and we click activate cycle. And there we go. We can see it go bluey purple color. And now when I play it, it just loops round and around. So whilst we're talking about the transport panel, just know that if you want to change the tempo of your track, you can do it here on the transport panel on the right hand side. And you can just click and type in a different tempo if you want no problem or you can just drag it up or down as you see fit now we actually want to leave it on 120 bpm that is the chosen tempo for this track so that's fine also some of you may have noticed we've got this sort of secondary transport panel which is showing up here this is actually a floating transport panel and you can activate it or deactivate it by pressing F2 on your keyboard. You can also come to the transport menu here and select the transport panel to activate or deactivate it. So now we've got a very basic kick pattern. That's fantastic. That's gonna act as the sort of foundation for the rest of our track. And in the next lesson, Jay's gonna take you through how to use really awesome tools in Cubase to make melodies, even if you don't have any music theory knowledge. And in the lesson after that, we'll be adding to this drum beat, adding some extra drums and making it into a proper nice sort of house beat. But for now, this is absolutely fine. There's just a couple of little things I want to show you. So with the kick track selected, let's go to our lower zone. Remember, you can show or hide the zones up here with the zone controls. And we want to go to the sampler control. And very quickly, I'm gonna show you a couple of very basic functions in here because they're pretty important to know about. So at the end here, we've got these controls, which is set sample start. So I could change the start of the sample if I want to. I actually don't want to, so I'm gonna leave it right there, but I can also change the end as well. So I could tighten up this kick a bit and sort of take off some of the tail. Let's just play that. As you can hear, it gets much shorter but we've also got that nasty click that's coming in. Can you hear that? Pretty obvious. So what you can do to get rid of that is add a fade out. So just above where it says set sample end, if you raise your cursor up, you'll see it say set fade out length. So we can just bring that in any amount and you can hear right away that it's got rid of that horrible little click. Now this is a bit too short. We don't wanna take out all of that out of our kick because that will sort of ruin the beefiness of it. So let's just chop off the very end tail. And that's absolutely perfect. Got a nice punchy kick. And later on in the tutorial, we will be going into a bit more depth about some of the controls in the sampler track. This is just obviously the first lesson, so I wanna keep things really simple. So we're almost there and ready to put our melody on our track, but first of all, I need to copy this MIDI over so we've got eight bars of this kick pattern. 
So I'm just going to zoom out a bit by holding Control or Command and using my mouse wheel. Obviously, you can do it however you like. And I need to get eight bars of this kick pattern. So to copy something in Cubase is really easy. Just hold Alt or Option and then click and drag whatever it is that you want to copy. You can also select multiple items and then hold Alt or Option, click and drag if you like. You can also select an object, hold Control or Command plus D and that will duplicate whatever it is that you've got selected. So now I've got eight bars of my kick, fantastic. I, of course, I can set the loop region by just dragging these control points either side or I can actually just select everything and hit P on my keyboard which will automatically set the loop region over the selected items in my project. And the absolute final thing of course and is super important to music production is to save it. So go to the file menu, go save as. This will automatically take you to the project folder that you created so you don't have to hunt it down. Let's just call this lesson one and hit save. So like I say, in lesson three of this course, you're gonna be building on this kick and actually making it into a proper drum beat and learning also how to edit in Cubase. But for now, that's good enough and we can start working on the soul of this track, which is the melody. So that's it for this lesson. To go on to lesson two, click the link in the description or click the end screen where you're gonna use the tools in Cubase to make this awesome melody. <laughs>